Well, hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to carve a wood spirit birdhouse, more specifically, a bluebird house. Now, these make great gifts for friends and family, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm making three of these uh, to give away this Christmas. Spring is not far away, so now is a good time to build birdhouses and get them set up before the springtime is here. So join with me and let's get started. Okay, here are the two books that I turn to often for bird house plans. And uh, these, these books give you uh, great information on like the size of the hole to attract different bird species, uh, size of the nesting uh, cavity, and so forth and so the bit so the birdhouse that i've made in this video i've tried to follow some of those recommendations but i have modified mine to be just a little bit longer than normal but these are good uh, books to uh, have on your bookshelf as a reference okay the first thing i'm going to do is use a forstner bit to drill a one and a half inch hole uh, this board is five and a half inches wide by 14 and a half inches long. Uh, I come down to the center of the hole from the top of that board about five and a half inches. And again, what I'm trying to go for is I want to be five inches, I want a five inch space between the bottom of the hole and the, the, the birdhouse floor. Now, once I have the uh, hole drilled like I want it, I'm just going to sketch out a real simple uh, wood spirit here. You don't have to be an artist to do this. It's just a real basic, uh, simple drawing. Uh, you can look at another picture and sort of sketch something out. Just all you really have to kind of do is placement of the, the nose, placement of the eyes, and as you can see here, placement of the uh, mustache. Really the only thing you have to be careful with here is when you bring down where your beard is going to transition because you want to bring the beard around to sort of make it, uh, you know, kind of cone shape at the end. But you want to make sure you transition it or bring the beard down enough to where uh, this board, this carving will completely cover, you know, the, uh, the body of the birdhouse. Okay, I'm using my Strong 202 Power Carver, and I'll be using the uh, very coarse uh, flame-shaped burr. Does a great job of doing all this initial carving. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go along the outline that I just drew and kind of outline the nose and outline the, the eyes and the, the mustache. Uh, keep in mind, you're only working with about a one-inch uh, board, so I'm not going to be able to carve very deep here. And you'll notice it gets very dusty. So if you've got a, make sure you wear a dust mask, and if you've got a good dust collection system, it's good to have that. Otherwise, you're just going to uh, use a, uh, a brush, kind of like I've been doing, and brushing the, that, that off as I go along. Okay, and now here you can see me starting to carve in the eyes. And I'm not going to carve in an eyeball. This is going to kind of be a traditional wood spirit. And I'm going to try to carve this these eyes in kind of deep and kind of bring them up underneath a little bit too to give it a little bit of a shadow. Okay, once I've got everything sort of carved in, you're going to start seeing me turn the, uh, the bit more on the side here. And I'm going to kind of feather out uh, and start taking away uh, material so that that nose will uh, stick up. The eyebrow will stick up more and also uh, feather back so the uh, mustache will also stand up more.
Okay, here I am kind of working on my eyes, working on the transition between the nose and the brow and the eyes. And I'm coming up underneath, uh, uh, trying to get a little bit deeper on those eyes and come up underneath them. Uh, so there's a little bit more of a shadow there. Okay, here I'm a little bit further along and you can see that, uh, you know, I continue to take material off and around the mustache and the mouth and the going back in and, and digging into those eyes a little bit more. And just, you know, this is the tedious part is, is taking that material off all around those parts that you want to kind of stand out. Okay, so now you're going to see me cutting into the top of the brow. So what I'm going to try to do after I do this is I'm going to feather away the wood uh, so that the forehead, uh, you know, slopes back just a little bit. And then later on, I'm going to add uh, some, uh, I guess, wrinkle lines up there. But first, I want to get above the brow and uh, over both eyebrows. Uh, make another, cut another, car carve another groove as I'm showing you here, and then I'm going to feather that wood back. Okay, now you can see me feathering the uh, wood back. And notice how I've tilted the uh, the power carver to the side and the bit to the side. Now, you, if you've got a, they make cylinder shaped uh, bits as well, and that might come in handy for doing this feathering work and taking off a large amount of the wood as you're seeing me doing here. Uh, or if you've got another carving tool, it might be a little more aggressive. That might work as well. But this, this is the tedious part. It's just taking off of this, uh, uh, the wood that needs to be taken down. Okay, and here you can just see me taking material off of the uh, uh, mustache. One thing you don't want to do is leave any, you know, uh, you want to carve the whole surface of the wood. You don't want to leave any original surface out there. So I'm just here getting rid of the surface. I'm not going real deep because I still want my mustache to stand out. I'm just basically scraping off the uh, surface here and giving it a little bit of a texture. And as you can see here, I'm going to work a little bit more around the, the bottom of the mouth. I'm going to have a little bit of a lip there. And I'll also go around the edge of that mouth a little bit later and then just kind of uh, bevel the mouth just a little bit all the way around. Okay, and here you can see me carving in some uh, uh, wrinkle lines, you know, on the forehead. This is after I've feathered the forehead back. I uh, only have enough space to maybe add, I don't know, two, maybe three wrinkle lines here. Now here I'm adding a wrinkle line under each eye.
And here you can see me working on the nose a little bit more, giving the nose a little bit more three-dimensional shape, uh, kind of working on the uh, contours, and then I'm going to go back and add a couple of nostrils here in just a minute. Okay, now you're going to start to start developing that little separation there, right there underneath the uh, nose between the uh, two sides of the mustache. And then you're going to see me here in a minute. I'm going to start uh, just coming down and creating the hairlines in the uh, mustache and eventually the beard as well. Now I'll draw these down fairly straight to begin with and then come back and refine them and I'll cross over a little bit, give them a little bit more of a random character, do both that for the mustache and for the beard area. Okay, now I've, I've swapped over to another cut saw uh, burr, still a flame shaped burr, but this one's a, a little bit finer burr, and I'm going to go back and just go over the entire carving and work on some of the details that uh, I couldn't get with the, uh, the very coarse uh, burr. Okay, and now I'm going to use a polishing uh, bit, and I found this at Home Depot. Uh, they sell it with the Ryobi uh, rotary tools, and I used it to do my final cleanup on the carving, and it really works really well. Um, you know, you do have to put it at a little bit lower RPM than you would the burrs, but I mean, it, it works extremely well getting in those uh, crevices and 
and uh, grooves and cleaning up those areas. It even will take off a little bit of wood if you're not careful because it does come in uh, different grits. And I believe this was uh, this one's a little bit more coarser grit, but you can get them in uh, you know several different grits. The other thing I noticed is that uh, you can get uh, the uh, the flame shape bit uh, uh, at Home Depot as well that works with the Ryobi tool. So um, anyway, check those out. But here I am. I'm just doing my final uh, cleanup here, getting rid of all the fuzzies and uh, you know, smoothing out any any big uh, uh, marks left by the other burrs. Okay, like I said earlier, this uh, video tutorial is really not about building birdhouses, and I know it's uh, getting kind of long. I will leave dimensions to the birdhouse body either in the description or I'll have it linked to my website if you want to get, uh, you know, the dimensions for building that. Uh, I did use the books that I mentioned earlier, and I did have to modify uh, some of the dimensions to accommodate the uh, wood spirit carving. Now, if you're not into building birdhouses, maybe you can get a buddy, a woodworking buddy, to uh, build the house for you. Um, what I like to do is I like to cut each board out first, and I like to dry fit everything together, make sure everything's uh, going to work. Remember, measure twice, cut once. I'm using number eight. Uh, one and five three eight inch uh, exterior wood screws and I'm using tight bond uh, three uh, wood glue which is a waterproof wood glue one one important tip with working with uh, cedar is I found it's important to drill pilot holes uh, for the wood screws because cedar does tend to split fairly easy if you're not careful and you don't really want to tighten those screws super tight when you're when you're screwing them in as well so what you're seeing me do in this video clip is i'm attaching the two sides to the backer board then i'm going and attaching the uh, floor uh, to the uh, both sides and the backer board and then i'm going to attach the top now with the top i'm not going to glue it down i'm just going to attach it with two of the wood screws and I might use a little bit of caulk but I'm doing that because in the future I want to be able to take the top off to you know clean out the birdhouse since I'm using cedar it's not really necessary to finish the birdhouse but I'm going to go ahead and add some medium dark Danish oil so the wood spirit will stand out a little bit better. Whatever you do, don't put any finish on the inside of the birdhouse and the birds will greatly appreciate that. What I'm doing is using a paper towel to apply the Danish oil and then wipe away the excess. Then I'll probably allow this to dry a couple of days. All that's left now is to attach the wood spirit to the birdhouse body. So I pre-drilled two holes and I'll be using two number eight one and five eight inch wood screws and some tight bond three wood glue. Hey, I just wanted to say a quick word about the Strong 202 Power Carver, which I bought earlier in the year. 
Uh, really enjoy this tool. This is about a hundred dollars more than say the Dremel 4000 and Dremel makes some great wood carving tools as well. But I really have grown to like this uh, strong 202 uh, because it's easy to hold, it's easy to maneuver. The uh, bits are really simple to change out and it has a lot of torque. So I really enjoy this, would highly recommend it. Maybe I'll do a future review on this. Well, anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. God bless, and we will see you in the next video.